Hey everyone, the name is Eric and I get a lot of questions from my INFP viewers and I got this question from Shino no, at Instagram. Hi Eric, my name is Shino and I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel as Light Awake. Thanks for your awesome insights about INFP and others on YouTube. I wasn't sure where to ask, but I was wondering if you would do a video to help INFPs identify and interact with other personnel types better. Sure thing, Shino, I can do that. I can talk about how INFPs interact with and can identify other personnel types beyond themselves. So INFP relationships and INFP connecting and managing people. What can you do? What can you think about? What is so unique about INFP? Well. Let's start with INFP and INFP relationships because that should be very close to heart. I call these identical types or twin types uh, because they are and function the same way. So INFPs will feel that other INFPs are people they connect with and understand very easily. It's like looking at yourself. You see their actions and their decisions and their behavior from your own self. You see oh, I could have done that, or I could have thought that way, or I could have felt that way, or I did that at one time, or I looked at this that way once. So a lot of time, INFPs will find themselves uh, comparing and contrasting their own behavior with the other person, the other INFP. And sometimes this can make you feel like a bit judged, like the other person is inserting themselves into your decisions. So if you feel somebody is constantly inserting their own actions, behavior, and their own values into your actions and decisions when talking with you, that's a sign that maybe they are an INFP as well. So look at it from both perspectives. It has the positive of feeling understood, but also has the negative of feeling like somebody is inserting themselves or trying to relate to or uh, connect with you, even though you feel you are different and an outsider or somebody weird or odd. So how can they relate? How could they possibly think the same way you do? <laughs> That's the INFP relationship in a nutshell. Now let's move on to the sibling types and then you have INFP and ENFP or INFP INTP or INFP ISFP or INFP INFJ. Let's begin with INFP INFJ. As an INFJ myself, I can tell you already that uh, it's kind of like a mentor-mentee dynamic and the INFP can sometimes be the mentor to the INFJ and the INFJ is sometimes the mentor to the INFP. I like this dynamic because it depends on your life experience and what you have experience about and this dynamic can switch. What you do see is uh, the INFJ is uh, the INFP is going to perceive the INFJ as a bit controlling or a bit manipulative or a bit pushy sometimes as the INFJ has a tendency to kind of insert and try to control your actions and decisions. They want to push or guide you into a certain direction. So you sometimes feel like they are really trying to manipulate or nudge you or uh, tell you what to feel or what to do or how to act in different situations. And that tendency to teach or educate can be a bit the complicated to an INFP as it can be like no I want to do things my way and I don't want you to try to influence that in any way or form or it can be like that uh, oh it's nice to have support or guidance or somebody from the outside that can give me value and perspective on my actions and decisions and can help me in the right path so it depends on if the relationship is positive or negative but most of the time it is positive so you most of the time you the feeling is uh, you have somebody that gives you support and guidance on the other hand, as an INFP, a lot of time you are the person that reminds the INFJ about the value of self-care. So INFPs are typically people that bring things back to the INFJ. So what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you care about? You feel like the INFJ is neglecting themselves and their own identity and their own decisions. And sometimes you feel like the INFJ goes along with the crowd and community too much. You feel like the INFJ is... Uh, trying too hard to fit in or be understood or to be communicated in a certain way or perceived in a certain way so you see that they miss and neglect their own feelings and don't listen to or give themselves enough credit so that's something positive an INFJ gives an INFP gives to the INFJ then we can talk about INFPs and INTPs what you'll feel already from the INTP is a lot more coldness and disagreeableness and reservedness. You can feel like the INTP doesn't like you or that they're against you or that they're critical of you. But in reality, a lot of time they're just trying to help you. So what you have to recognize is it's the absence of feeling is not an absence of care. 
a lot of time INTPs show that they care by trying to correct and help and fix you. So if they notice that you're off about something or that you're a bit uh, unprecise or a bit abstract or woo-woo about something or if they are trying to ask you to clarify something, what do you mean with that, how do you use that, um, why do you use it that way, don't feel picked apart because that's something a lot of INFPs might feel. I'm being picked apart. Somebody's questioning my identity. Somebody's questioning my decisions. Somebody's questioning my beliefs and values. I need to resist being questioned. What you want to instead evolve towards is uh, accepting critical uh, thinking in other people and embracing and appreciating it. So understanding that, hey, this person is not attacking my identity, they're merely correcting it. So what are they saying? What things should I listen to? And what things should I disregard? Because there are decisions here that you can disregard. You don't have to listen to everything that they are saying. You can say, yeah, I understand this and I will change that, but this is something crucial to my identity, so this I won't change. So you can set clear boundaries with an INTP and then they will understand that, yeah, I will change or make an attempt to better this, but I will not better that because that's who I am. So let them know what's close to your heart and too close to your heart and say, I don't want to have, ha have any criticism on this level, but you can criticize this. What you might also get as an INFP dealing with INTPs is that they don't want to let you in. So if you're trying to listen to and hear them out and understand them better, at times they will shake that away and say, I don't want to be understood. I don't want to be looked at critically. I don't want you to pick me apart this way. And that might be hard to understand as an INFP. Why doesn't this person want to let me in? Doesn't they trust me? Doesn't they have, uh, do they not feel welcome around me? Is there something I said? Is there something I did? So understand that INTPs they take a while to open up to you and uh, they might not give you a lot in the beginning and sometimes they will keep themselves under a lid and their emotions away from you because they are first focused on their reasons they want to understand why you're talking to them what you want what your intentions are and before and when they you've answered those questions and you got them past that they will be a lot more comfortable opening up to you in that way as well then we have INFP, ENFP. INFP, ENFP, they're very interesting because uh, they have different opinions on what is valuable and enjoyable and fun. INFPs and ENFPs, they are very different on what they consider fun. They're good at similar things, but they have different opinions about what is considered to be fun or good or nice or enjoyable or flow. So what an INFP perceives as uh, stable or comfortable or relaxing and ENFP considers to be boring or uh, like stale or uh, st being stuck. So a lot of time I, ENFPs might find themselves like constantly trying to shake up your routine. Let's go do something. Let's go try something. Let's go sh change something. Let's go action, take some action. INFPs might feel like, why are they constantly rushing me? I was just getting comfortable. I was just uh, starting to relax and feel at ease. But all of a sudden, they started uh, wanting things to happen and starting to make a bunch of changes. So that's something very important to look at when you look at uh, INFP and ENFP. Understand that their ENFP is just trying to amuse themselves and uh, get some energy and they just don't want to feel stuck or lost and so what you can do is uh, you can test those borders a bit you can say yeah I can go out for an hour or I can do this but then after that I want to take it easy or yeah you can do it for an hour and then I'll come join you later or uh, have some like compromise in this relationship dynamic and say yeah of course I want to go out with you for a bit or I want to do something with you uh, but uh, then I would like to watch a movie with you later so make sure that you hold to those kind of boundaries so that you have that kind of a positive two-sided dynamic where you can both enrich each other's lives. Recognize that ENFP uh, initiative will lead you to new opportunities and new possibilities that you might have otherwise missed. Beyond that, you have the opposites. <laughs> so the true opposite is the ESTJ and the INFP ESTJ dynamic is really interesting to look at because say, there you have somebody that uh, is different to you in every single dynamic, yet at some strange way understands you and shares a similar consciousness. 
ESTJs and INFPs will talk very similarly, but they will put their emphasis on different things and they will have different values. So a lot of time when you look at purely their cognition, what you'll see is they uh, use similar wording and they approach the world and have a similar consciousness as you. And that can be very familiar to you as an INFP. It can be, hey, that person is actually not that bad or not that different or not that crazy, you know, because I see where they're coming from. It's just that I would have done it differently. So a lot of time, that's the dynamic with INFP ESTJ. I see where you're coming from, but I would have done it differently. What that means is as an INFP is uh, you recognize that you could have done something similar under stress as an ESTJ would do under flow. What you notice is that while an ESTJ in, uh, in flow is very loud and confident and boisterous and strong-minded and active and pushy, you as an INFP can be pushy and loud and boisterous and uh, a bit headstrong under stress. So there can be a confusion there that are they under, are they stressed? Is that why they're making such attention to themselves? Are they feeling bad? Is there something wrong? So a lot of time when the, the misunderstanding is that INFPs might think that ESTJs are feeling bad or do what they do because they feel stressed or tired or anxious, when in reality, they are doing things because they are enjoying something. And that can be really refreshing as an INFP. You can be like, what? They, are, they actually enjoy doing this? They actually like that? They actually find that fun? Then it can't be that bad. Uh, befriending an ESTJ is great if you want to really develop a better relationship to your stress functions. So if you want to learn to not be so anxious and not so afraid, befriend an ESTJ because they'll show you there's nothing to be afraid of. What they, they love doing what you fear. They enjoy meeting and doing and talking to people and engaging the community and uh, improving themselves and pushing themselves and setting high goals. They find it fun. So why don't you realize that it's not as bad as you think? We then have some... Uh, other interesting types to look at and that's the INFP INTJ or INFP ISFJ or INFP ESFP or uh, the INFP um, let's see where we what, what are we missing here yeah anyway so let's start with INTJ uh, INFP INTJ relationships are very interesting because uh, it's an introverted intuitive dynamic. Uh, it's uh, enjoying sitting together and fantasizing or theorizing or dreaming together. It's like a relationship of dreamers. Uh, uh, INFP INTJ is like the dreamer dynamic because both of you have and can dream together and can dream very vividly together. So what you can offer the INF INTJ is like uh, um, more like that uh, verbal angle of questions and different what ifs and possibilities and what they can offer you is really that visual angle of look at this big idea like look at this really cool project this really long-term future look at this really big elaborate vision so uh, a lot of time it's the dynamic of um, true intuition really like a, it's a one of the really intuitive dynamics uh, only rivaled by the ENTJ and INFP dynamic because uh, what you see there is whoa this person understands and uh, can dream and can see things just the way I can but they dream a bit differently I dream a lot more in color and they dream a lot more in numbers and figures and so they put figures and numbers on my ideas and dreams and then they make it a bit more real and they make it a bit more elaborate and they bit make it a bit more long term and they add to and uh, create things that I would never have thought of with these things. INFP ISFJ that's also an interesting dynamic to look at uh, because it's uh, really a dynamic of heal two healers. Uh, ISFJs they look after you like no other personality type they make you feel safe and relaxed they make you feel comfortable they take care of you more like than anyone else would they are very much people that uh, look to your needs and feelings and make you feel reassured and make you feel appreciated and make you feel supported and uh, they protect you from 
the community they make you feel like you can be yourself and like you that you fit in somewhere that's a really interesting dynamic INFP ISFJ it's an underestimated dynamic then we have uh, for example the INFP ESFP dynamic and uh, it is uh, kind of like having the inside out version of yourself because an INFP and an ESFP they're very different in the sense that hey uh, both are very individualistic and uh, passionate people with uh, strong emotions and values and strong needs but the ESFP is so much more bold they are really bold and that's going to be really inspiring to an INFP to see somebody go out and stand up on stage and say hey why are you doing this we need to stop that we need to change that this is not right or this is unfair and so as an INFP you can look at that and be like wow can't believe they care so much. They, I can't believe they are prepared to put themselves out there like that. I've always been afraid of doing that, but they are so prepared. They are so bold. Finally, we can look at uh, those that share only one letter similarity with you. And that's, for example, ENTJ. I recently just brushed upon the ENTJ uh, because the ENFJ, the ENTJ, sorry, is somebody that uh, provides you with true intuition in its most raw and visceral form. It's the most intuitive pairing for an INFP, and that's why it is more sought after than people think. INFPs and ENTJs, they share a similar intuitive language. They talk similarly. They have the most fun together. It's probably the most fun pairing for an INFP because ENTJs, they are true form, fun, uh, in, um, um, fun in a bottle. They're really a bottle of fun. They're really like uh, a waterfall of ideas and possibilities. And so a lot of time they are people that really get your ideas moving. They, they put money, they put value, they put thought into your ideas and they really create like this intuitive dialogue. A lot of time when line of peace sharing or opening up about something or an idea or a possibility, the ENTJ is the one that is the most ready to pick that up and do something with it. While other personnel types or other intuitives might be more skeptical or more prone to criticism or is that right or do I understand this correctly? ENTJs, they get it and they go, hey, I can take that idea and I can do something with that. So it's a very, it creates a very rich intuitive uh, playground. And um, so it's a very sought after and positive matchup, especially when it comes to energy. It is more negative in the sense of uh, emotional issues or control or uh, action. A lot of time the INFP can feel challenged or pushed around by the ENTJ. Uh, so it does have its share of downsides as well. But on an intuitive level, it's a really amazing and fun pairing. Then we have... Uh, for example, the ESFJ. Now, the ESFJ shares a similar preference for feelings, so it's uh, probably the most generous and uh, caring person you can encounter in the sense that they get you to dream big and care and to do your best for your community and for the people around you. ESFJs, they really bond with INFPs on community, caring, doing, helping, supporting, giving, and making the world a better place. So it's really like you feel like somebody gets your values and feels the same way you do and wants to do something about your feelings. If you feel a certain way, the ESFJ is going to be like, okay, let's go, let's do it. I can put together, I can fix it, I can take care of it. And so ESFJs, they really become like the INFP's champion uh, of the INFP's values and needs. Then we can talk about the, the ESTP personality type because ESTPs and INFPs, they share a similar preference for perceiving and so they're both very much uh, contrarians and individualists and black sheep. Uh, they really go against the flow. They really do whatever they want and say whatever they want and think whatever they want. So it's really like that pairing of uh, the IDGAF pairing, if you get what I mean. It's the... Uh, the pairing of uh, learning to let go of what anybody else thinks and any control and what any law or rule says and learning to just do whatever you feel is right. So that's the perceiving pairing. 
Then we have uh, finally the introverted pairing and that's the ISTJ INFP relationship. So you can recognize this kind of a person because uh, they really maximize your feeling of uh, relaxation, security and calm. They really make you feel like you can just be yourself and relax and unwind and they can really take away the pressure from you for anything. They can really make you feel like, oh, I can let go, I can relax, I can unwind, I can just be myself, I can just do things in my own pace. ISTJs will never make you feel rushed, they'll always make you feel safe, they'll always make you feel like, oh, I can take things in my own tempo. Then we have other types we can talk about, and that's uh, the INFP and ENFJ. Uh, I tend to say the INFP and the ENFJ, they're ideal for relationships. So INFP, ENFJ, that's uh, a pairing for people that want to feel understood and cared for and they want to meet somebody they can talk to about anything, a person that uh, will share their values and beliefs or a person that will uh, care about things just the way like you care. ENFJs they tend to be ideal for growth so if you're looking for growth or to grow in yourself and your values and beliefs and to move for, to take big action in your life or to better yourself if you're looking for somebody inspiring who will help you to see things from new perspectives well ENFJ is a great matchup and it's a very popular one it's one of the most frequently sought after matchups for INFPs for good reason how do you recognize an ENFJ? Well, you recognize that ENFJ is a lot more outspoken and that uh, ENFJ is a lot more prepared to put themselves out there. You'll notice that ENFJ tries very hard to be understood and uh, you notice that they're a bit of the black sheep that tries to dress like a white sheep. So you notice that they are trying to fit in even though they stand out and even though they are so quirky and weird or different than anyone else. So that's something really interesting. Why would they do that? Why are they trying so hard? <laughs> I probably missed any types here. I missed the ISTP. And uh, what can be said about the ISTP? Well, it is uh, probably the best for balance and for stability. I think INFPs and ISTPs, they tend to complement each other by providing you with a sense of stability and uh, control. So they make you feel like everything is kept in check, everything is taken care of, everything is uh, in balance, everything is in harmony the way it should be. Then uh, what other matchups can we talk about? Oh yeah, INFP, ISFP. Uh, well, I think the ISFP INFP relationship is interesting because the ISFP is a bit like the white sheep that tries to look like a black sheep. The ISFP is somebody who is actually really normal and that fits in and uh, can get along with anyone, even though they look a bit different, look odd, or have their own unique personality traits or patterns or uh, ways of dressing or acting or talking. They have very much unique mannerisms, but they still can fit in with basically anyone or talk to anybody and that's kind of interesting for an INFP you can sometimes feel like I struggle to get in or struggle to know how to talk to people or how to connect with the community around me. All right last but not least INFP ENTP what can you say about INFP ENTP well you can say that the ENTP is a person that uh, is going to really keep you on your toes as an INFP because they are going to be a lot more competitive and a lot more like strong in themselves and a bit more in their abilities they're gonna be a lot more critical and a little bit more improvement oriented so they're constantly thinking how can I fix this how can I help how can I what can I do better and when they look at you they'll think okay how can I fix this person? How can I better this person? How can I help this person? How, what, how can I solve their problems? And if an INFP is uh, going to complain a lot, they're going to have a lot of struggles or problems, the ENTP is going to be like wanting to come at those problems and fix those for you. Uh, because the ENTPs, they like when everybody is happy and everybody is relaxed and they like when everyone's feelings are kept positive. So communication emotionally can be difficult because they can make a joke out of your feelings or they can make uh, things silly but at the same time it can be a bit liberating because hey it's good to be able to laugh about things sometimes if they get too heavy and knowing that you can laugh about it hey wow you can laugh at your feelings i thought feelings were supposed to be taken very seriously uh, something interesting to an infp 
Anyways, Shino, I hope I answered your questions and I hope I answered any viewers' questions. If I didn't, leave a like or a comment down below. Let me know what personal type you want to know a bit more about or what uh, relationships you're struggling with at the moment. Do you have a certain type you find hard to talk to or, or have difficulties with? And uh, how do you notice that in comparison to your own personality type? Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.